we're going to be looking at experiments to determine the acceleration of free fall. One experimental setup is shown here. The time taken for a steel ball bearing to free fall from rest through a height h is determined. And height h is measured with a ruler from the bottom of the steel ball bearing to the trap door. When the switch is opened, the timer starts and the electromagnet is switched off, so the ball bearing is released and so free falls. And when the ball bearing hits the trap door and opens the bottom switch, the timer stops. So the timer determines the time taken for the ball bearing to free fall through height h. We can use one of the SUVAT equations to determine the acceleration of free fall, that is g. So s, the displacement is height h. u, the initial velocity equals zero. We do not have v, the final velocity. We're trying to determine our value for acceleration g. And we have time t from the timer. So we need an equation that links S, U, A and T. So we use S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. And if we substitute in the values, we have S equals H, which equals zero because U is zero plus a half g t squared. So h equals a half g t squared. And if we rearrange the equation to make g the subject, then the acceleration of free fall is equal to two times h divided by t squared. We can then measure t for a range of heights h, and then plot a graph of h against t squared. And that will give us a straight line through the origin because h is directly proportional to t squared. And if we compare this equation with the general equation for a straight line that goes through the origin, which is y equals mx, we can see then that our y values represent the height, our x values represent t squared. So m, the gradient, is equal to half g. So g is equal to 2 multiplied by the gradient. If a person was to measure the time taken using a stopwatch, then there would be a reaction time error when the person starts or stops the stopwatch. And so this method has eliminated this error by automating the measurement. However, there are limitations that reduce the value of g that is obtained in this experiment. And the first is the presence of drag or air resistance that acts on the ball bearing. Also, you can have a sticky magnet. And this is when the switch is opened and the timer starts. There may be a delay in when the magnet loses its magnetism and the ball is released. And also there may be a delay from when the ball hits the trap door and it actually opens to break the circuit to stop the timer. Another experiment to determine the acceleration of free fall is to use a light gate which is connected to a timer and a weighted card. So this may be a card which has blue tack attached to it, is released from rest at a height h above a light beam. And height h is measured from the center of the card to the light beam. The card free falls and when it breaks the light beam, the timer starts. 
and after the card passes the light gate, the unbroken light beam returns and the timer stops. So the time taken for the card to pass through the light gate is determined. And from this, we can determine the velocity of the card as it passes through the light gate. And velocity is found by the displacement divided by time taken. So the displacement will be the length of the card divided by the time taken TC. We can use one of the SUVAT equations to determine the acceleration of free fall. So S is the height through which the card is moved through. The initial velocity is zero. The final velocity is the velocity of the card as it passes through the light gate. So that's the length of the card divided by TC, the time it took for the card to pass through the light gate. And the acceleration A is equal to G, acceleration of free fall. And we don't have time T, which is the time taken for the card to fall through height H. So we need an equation that links S, U, V and A. So that is B squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And if we substitute the values in, we can see that V squared equals 0 plus 2GH. So V squared equals 2GH. And if we rearrange the equation to make G the subject, then the acceleration of free fall equals V squared divided by 2H. So we can measure TC, the time for the card to pass through the light gate for a range of heights, and then plot a graph of V squared, the velocity of the card as it passes through the light gate, against height H. And we'll get a straight line through the origin, because V squared is proportional to H. And if we compare this equation with the general equation for a straight line that passes through the origin, which is y equals mx, then we can see the y is equal to our v squared. The x is equal to h. So m, the gradient, is equal to 2g. So the acceleration of free fall g is equal to the gradient divided by 2. So the light gate connected to a timer eliminates any reaction time error that a person would have taking the measurement using a stopwatch. However, there are limitations that affect the accuracy of the value of G that is found in the experiment. And again, it's due to the presence of drag or air resistance that acts on the card and so reduces the value of the acceleration of free fall. But also, if the card is free falling at an angle, so it's not free falling perfectly vertically downwards, then the actual length measurement of the card passing through the light gate will be incorrect, and hence the velocity of the card as it passes through the light gate will be incorrect. And so we'll be using a larger value of length and a smaller time measurement. So the actual velocity v will be larger, which will give us a larger value for the acceleration of free fall.